Welcome to another video in the Study With Me series where I'm going to be tackling vulnerable road users. Hi, I'm Doran from Driving Theory UK and on this channel I help you study to pass your theory test first time with hints, tips and tricks, also your driving test with driving videos. So this channel is for you, anything driving theory related. In this video I'm going to be doing the Study With Me series where I'm doing vulnerable road users, where I'm going to be doing a 20 question mark test, breaking it down, giving you hints, tips and tricks and giving you the best studying techniques to pass your theory test first time time. Let's waste no time and jump onto my desktop. You're following a cyclist. What should you do when you wish to turn left a short distance ahead? Let me just explain. When you have a question with an image, my advice is to do the question first. So read the question and then go and look at the image. Don't go question, answers, image because sometimes by looking at the image you can sort of work out what the answer is or give you a better idea what you're kind of looking for before going to the answers by going question answers it could be too much information for the brain so keep it simple question image then answer so just breaking it down again reading the question you're following the cyclist what should you do when you wish to turn left a short distance ahead so again looking at the image if it's a short distance ahead the safest option is going to stay behind the cyclist that's going to be the safest option overtake the cyclist before you reach the junction no pull up alongside the cyclist and stay level that doesn't make any sense so no hold back until the cyclist has passed the junction that's going to be the safest option out of all of them and go around the cyclist on the junction again no where would you see this sign um, so that's a picture of school children and that's going to be on a school bus or coach. They can word it slightly different with the answers, but basically looking for on a school bus or a school coach. On a rear of a school bus or coach, yes, but always read all the other answers just in case there's a better one. At the side of a road, no. In the window of a car taking children to school, no. At a playground area, no. At night, what does it mean if you see a pedestrian wearing reflective clothing and carrying a bright light? Let me just explain and break this one down. It's a pedestrian walking at night carrying a bright red light. It's The answer is an organised walk. And let me explain. They're trying to keep it consistent with a car because remember it's all a road safety, highway codes, theory tests all related to driving. They're trying to keep it consistent to a car. So at, in front of a car, it's a white light. At the back of a car, it's red lights, i.e. your brake lights. If the pedestrian's carrying a bright red light at night, it's organized walk, but they're at the back of the organized walk because the walk will go with the flow of traffic. It can give you the same question, but it's pedestrian carrying a white light. Same answer, organized walk. But now because it's a white light, the pedestrian's ears at the front of the organized walk. All they're trying to do is keep it consistent with a car. So I'm just gonna break the question down again. At night, what does it mean if you see a pedestrian wearing reflective clothing and carrying a bright red light? You're approaching the traffic danger spot, no. You're approaching an organized walk, yes. Remember the person's now at the back of the organized walk with a red light. You're approaching roadworks, no. You're approaching a slow moving vehicle, no. Where would you see this sign? This is very similar to the question we had earlier on. Same image, similar type of question. And that's how the fairy test works. It can throw up similar questions, but it's slightly different. And that's why I say always understand the question, always understand the answers. So let's see what answer they give us this time. Where would you see this sign? School children on a school bus. So this time it's on a school bus. Near a school crossing, no. At a pedestrian only area, no. At a playground entrance, no. You're approaching a roundabout. What should you do if there, if there are horses being ridden in front of you? Hold back. You're not in a rush on a driving lesson or a driving test. So just hold back. That's the safest option. Accelerate past as quickly as possible. No, because you accelerate is going to spook the horses. Treat them like any other vehicle. No, because they're not an, any other vehicle. They can be spooked. Sand your horn as a warning again, spooking them and give them plenty of room. Yeah, going to give them plenty of room and take your time going past horses. Because remember, again, you're not on a rush. Um, not on a rush. You're not in a rush at any point on your driving test. You want to turn right from a main road into a side road. What should you do just before turning? Let me just break that down because there's a lot of information on that. You want to turn right from a main road so you're on the main road into the side road. What should you do just before turning? Let me just give you a visual clue. You're on the main road and you are turning right. So if you're turning right, bikes can pass you so you really want to be checking your rear view your mirrors basically before turning right that's what they're looking for something along those lines stop and set the parking brake no check for traffic overtaking you 
on the right, yes, that's your cyclist mainly. Select first gear, no, because if you're in automatic, that doesn't work. Cancel your right turn signal. If you cancel it, you're not turning right anymore. You decided to go straight. How should you react to inexperienced drivers? That's a weird question considering you're inexperienced if you're studying for the theory side, but hey, Read it there again. How should you react to inexperienced drivers? Sound your horn to warn them of your presence. No, you definitely don't want that because you're going to um, make them stress, basically. Overtake them as soon as possible. Again, that can't be safe if you're, if you're going to overtake as soon as possible because if it's possible, it may not be safe when you're doing it. Flash your head. Again, once you've got flash your headlights, you couldn't eliminate that. Um, Oh, let me read the full answer though, because this is this is key. Flash your headlights that you shouldn't be doing to indicate that it's safe for them to proceed. It's got safe in there. And if you watch any of my other videos, I always said if it's got safe, safely, safety in the answer, shortlist is a possible, but that one you can eliminate because it's got flashy headlights, that you would never do. So you can eliminate that one, even though it's got the word safe in it. Be patient and prepare for them to react more slowly. And that's going to be the safest option. And that's, as again, when you guys are learning, that's what you want is people to be patient and understanding. What action should you take when you see flashing amber lights under a school warning sign? So again, look at the image. So it's a school sign triangle warning you and it's flashing amber. That normally comes on when school is starting or finishing. You really want to be slowing down, reducing speed, something along those lines. Wait ever lights until they stop flashing. No, could it be there for a long time? Keep up your speed and sound the horn. No, increase it. Once you've got increased your speed in the school area, it's going to be dangerous. Increase your speed to clear the area quickly. No, reduce speed until you're clear of the area yes safety you've just passed your driving test how can you reduce the risk of being involved in a collision that's going to be take more training pass plus possible by taking further training first one out but always read the others just in case by never going over 40 miles an hour no but always staying close to the vehicle in front that you should never be doing so that's dangerous in itself by staying in the left hand lane on all roads if you need to turn right you're going to be struggling with that one but it's going to be the first one. Yeah, take further training. Pass plus is what I would recommend or motorway lessons as a standalone lesson. Why should you look carefully for motorcyclists and cyclists at junctions? They're harder to see. They're harder to see first one out. They, they may not see you turn. They, that's no. They may slow down to let you turn. No, they may want to turn into the side road. No, they're harder to see. So take a bit more time when you come out of junctions. And junctions, failure for a driving test. Junctions is right up there in the top five, I think. A horse rider is in the left-hand lane approaching a roundabout. Where should you expect the rider to go? With horse riders and cyclists, they can take any lane that's best for them. So they're not going to take the same lane, the same signal as a car. So they can go in any direction. So I'll just read the question again. A horse rider is in the left-hand lane approaching a roundabout. Where should you expect the rider to go? To the left, no. In any direction, that's going to be the answer. Straight ahead, no. And to the right, no. You're driving at night, key, you're driving at night. What should you do if you're dazzled by a vehicle behind you? Let me just explain just in case you don't know what dazzle is. Dazzled is being blinded. So someone's got a full beam on and they dazzled you. So it's a loss of your eyesight temporarily. So that's what dazzled means. Because when that comes up on the fairy test, sometimes the pupils really get confused because they don't know what dazzled means. So dazzled just means a loss of your eyesight or temporary blindness. Just temporary because it's a bright light. It's like looking in the sun, basically. So just reading the question again, Again, you're driving at night. What should you do if you're dazzled by a vehicle behind you? Set your mirror to the anti-dazzle position. That's possible. And let me just show you why that's possible. You've got anti-dazzle and you've got dazzled. It links, there's a link there. So tick that as a possible answer. Brake sharply. Again, once you've got sharply, you can eliminate that. Switch your rear lights on and off. That makes no sense because it's dark. It's nighttime, so you need your lights on so you could be seen. And set your mirror to dazzle but other drivers and again you don't want to be doing that dazzling other drivers so it's going to be that one set your mirror to and to dazzle position i will add as well they can give you the same question different answer which would be pull over stop until your eyesight returns what hazards should you be especially aware of if you're turning left into a side road pedestrians yes possible parked vehicles 
no one-way street no traffic congestion let me just give you some meat on the bones with this one it says the question did say what hazards should you be especially aware of part vehicles one-way street that standard you take that into account pedestrians is what we call a moving target you don't know how they're going to behave that's why you need to be especially aware of pedestrians that's why the answer is what it is What should you do when you're passing loose sheep on the road? Pass quickly but quietly. Passing quickly, that means your reds are going to be kind of high so you can spook them and they can run in front of you. Heard them to the side of the road? No. If you're going to stop, but then even if, even if you heard them to the side of the road, you're going to have to get back into the car and they can come back onto the road. So it's going to be no with that. Briefly sound your horn no. You're going to make them scatter all over by doing that loud noise. Go very slowly. Yeah, go slowly. So if they do run it in front, you are in a position to stop. You're driving past parked cars, so the cars are parked. What should you do if you see a bicycle wheel sticking out between the cars? Slow down is gonna be the answer we're looking for. Brake sharply, again, you got sharply in it. Brake sharply and flash your lights. There's two things you don't do. Slow down and be prepared to stop for a cyclist, yes. Accelerate past quickly and sound your horn. Accelerate speeding, no. And sound your horn, no. You've got two no's in that, basically. Slow down and wave the cyclist, you got wave. Once you've got wave in your answer, it's gonna be wrong because you should not be waving anybody um, on your driving lesson or driving test. Which sign means that there may be people walking along the road? Which sign means that there may be people walking along the road? So remember, always read the question and then look at the image. Let me just explain a bit about signs and images just in case you haven't seen my traffic sign videos. With images, you always got to imagine that you're going from bottom to top. That's how you got to imagine it because the highway code says you should always park up on the left. We drive on the left. So you're going from bottom to top. So when you look at signs and images, you're going from bottom to top. That's how you want to picture it. Just reading the question again, which sign means that there may be people walking along the road. So if you imagine what I said earlier on, images, you're going from bottom to top. So this person's crossing your path. It says walking along the road. And this is no pedestrians, by the way. Red circles are no's. That's a no. If you've got a cyclist and pedestrian either sides and against the blue circles, mandatory. So that means they can be there. This one, the triangle C, you're going up. And remember, the person's crossing your path. So they're crossing the path. That's a pedestrian crossing. And this one, you're going up. They're coming towards you. It'd be this one. So this be a sign like in a country lane, for example, when there's no pavement. They're walking towards you. So it's going to be D. What does this sign mean? Right, this is with flow cycle lane. You've got a picture of a cycle, it's with flow. So the cyclist is going up. You will be this side of the white line going up. So you're going with the flow of traffic. If they had the arrow coming down under the cycle, it's a contra flow. Contra means going against. So if it's got an arrow coming down, it's contra flow going against. Because there's no arrow, it's with flow. With flow cycle lane, first one out. Cyclists and buses only, no, because there's no bus pictures. Contra flow, like I said, contra flow would be the arrow going down, going against, and no cyclists or buses, again, no. How will a school crossing patrol signal? Right, let me read that again. Dyslexia kicking in. How will a school crossing patrol signal you to stop? By displaying a red light, no. By pointing to children waiting to cross, no. By displaying a stop sign, yes. That's the old fashioned lollipop person. They're called crossing patrol officers now, but the old fashioned lollipop person. By giving an arm signal, no. You're approaching this roundabout. What should you do when a cyclist is keeping to the left while signaling to turn right? This is a similar question to what we had before. So again, looking at the image, he's in the left-hand lane signaling right. A cyclist will take left or right lane. What they feel is safe is for them. They won't take the same route as a car. So you need to take that into consideration. So overtake them, no, can't be safe. Sound your horn, no. Allow them space to turn, yes, as a possible. Assume they're turning left. He's got a right signal on. You wouldn't assume they're turning left. What does it mean when a moving vehicle is showing a flashing amber beacon? 
So let me just explain this three colored beacon that comes up a lot. This asks for a flash and amber beacon. It means it's slow moving. Anything that's slow moving will have an amber light on. So your motorway maintenance vehicles or road maintenance vehicles, your dust carts, your recycling vans, your disabled buggies that um, mobility scooters is called. They will be slow moving. If it comes up as green, it's your doctor's car. And if it's blue, it's your emergency services. So your police, fire engine. So blue is your emergency services. Green is your doctor's. In this case, it's going to be amber, which is slow moving. Let's read the question again. What does it mean when a moving vehicle is showing a flashing amber beacon? The vehicle has broken down. No, the vehicle is a doctor's car with green. Remember what I said, the vehicle is slow moving, it's going to be that one. And the vehicle belongs to school crossing patrol, no. There you have it, another category completed. I just want to mention something during the video that I noticed when I was recording it. I stumbled over my words and I made a few mistakes in the words I was saying. I'm going to leave that footage in. I'm not going to edit that out. The reason why is because I suffer from dyslexia. It's mild, it's not a major, it's mild. Um, so you've seen me read the question once or twice maybe three times on the video i'll, I'll know it when I, I look back on it the reason why i'm leaving that footage in is to show you that i'm no different from you guys i do this every single week and i still have to read the question two or three times to a certain point when i get pupils coming to the class some of them are embarrassed by their learning disabilities and you shouldn't be there's ways around it the biggest one and the easiest one is to use headphones when you are studying, you can do that on your app. You don't have to wait till you go to the test on the day. So I'm not going to edit that out because I want you guys to understand I am no different from you guys when it comes to studying. I still step up on my words, but the way to compensate for that is to read it two or three times. There is no rush on your test. You've got 57 minutes to do the theory test. In the classroom, I've got people doing it in 12 minutes, 14 minutes, 15 minutes. Guess what the result is? They're failing it in the classroom because they feel they've got to be rushing. There is no benefit in rushing your theory test. Take your time, do the answers, get it right, pass first time. That's all I want to say on that. Because like I said, it's very easy for me to edit that out and make it sound polished, but that's not fair to you guys because I'm making it look easier than it really is. But anyway, hopefully you got some benefit from that. If you did, like, comment and subscribe. YouTube's going to recommend the video here. I'm going to recommend the playlist here. Go off and watch which video is relevant to you and I will see you in that video.